Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. This is part two of a Q&A session. The first one actually didn't do so well in terms of performance. I know that a lot of people requested it and you guys asked a lot of good questions, but not many people actually viewed the video. So this is probably gonna be my last Q&A. It's gonna be questions submitted on Instagram a few weeks ago and I'm gonna be answering them and I'm not gonna be answering any more questions moving forward. This is the last one I'll be doing in the foreseeable future. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Question number one, what is your short-term and long-term goal for the channel? Oh, I don't have a long-term goal with the channel. When I started this journey, I did not know where I was going. I wasn't, I don't have a target in mind. But short-term wise, I'm filming a lot of rehabilitation, a lot of propagation and plant care contents and styling within my house these few weeks. But I will be doing a lot of plenty adventures around Indonesia and Thailand, Japan, Taiwan. Maybe I would really love to go to other places. I'm not sure yet, but I have some of these journeys planned out. So they're going to be unfolding. So I'll be taking you with me on these amazing journeys. So that is pretty much the short term plan of the channel. In terms of the long term, of course, I hope that I can monetize from this better. I can turn this into a full time job. But unfortunately, I'm going to be very very honest with you guys, earnings have kind of plummeted a bit and I'm on my way to search for another part-time job or I'm going to invest more time in my businesses. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to be reducing any of my quality or quantity of the plant contents. It just means that I won't be growing this channel as much as I would like to unless I get a sizable donation, sponsorship, or if you guys want to support me on Patreon. And just watch a lot more of my videos if you can. I know that some of you guys are busy now doing other things, getting your life back to normal. A lot of people have given up their plant hobbies which is also fine but I'm hanging in there and I'm gonna be strong for you guys question number two you've already done so much work to organize and beautify your place what other plant goals do you have for 2023 on for your place not really again I don't really have a plan but all I know is that all the plants are really doing well these days a lot of plants have rehab they started to put out a lot of new growth I'm starting to propagate again for for you guys I'm filming a lot of these contents so I don't really have a plan I'm just going with the flow and and I don't really have any money now to buy new plants. So if some of y'all, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of tours and things like that. And sometimes people do give me some of their plants, some of these hybridizers. And I'm always very excited for that. I know Eddie Pranoto and some of my guests have previously given me some wonderful, wonderful plant gifts. And those are ones that I really, really will take. If the house is on fire, that's the plants that I will take with me. And I will grow them big and I will kind of show them in the channel when they get bigger, of course. And kind of just appreciate it. So maybe... I'll be gifted some plants here and there. I do have some cheap plants that I bought recently just to fill in some of the space, just to toy around with them. And I'm filming some of the contents, but I think they're gonna be for Patreons only. So I'm gonna start having a paid part of the channel where people have to be a member. But yeah, I'm adding a bit of plants to my collection, but not much. So there's not a lot going on in this house. I'm waiting for things to grow out and I'll be styling them better around the house throughout the year. So I'll be doing a lot of styling contents and a lot of updates. A lot of plant content creators are building large terrariums in IKEA greenhouse cabinets. Would you ever consider doing a similar setup to your home? I have been dreaming about it all the time. I wanted to do like some tanks, some terrariums. Uh, unfortunately, this, this area here, this back area is kind of a terrarium on its own. Like I was just filming last night that we got 99% humidity in the space just by the simple act of closing the doors to this space and keeping the fan running. So it was about 26 degrees Celsius and 99% humidity last night. Of course, I cannot do that all the time because I don't want mold and stuff to grow in this room. But this room is actually a large terrarium on its own, if you know what I mean. But I would really love to do some of the smaller things, grow like all these terrariums plants but these cost money to set up and these plants will also be quite an investment so right now I'm in no position to do any of these projects what do you do when you're not working in your free time well I go to the gym a lot and I'll be traveling quite a bit to some plant shows plant nurseries and I'll be with my family we're gonna have some family vacation we haven't had that in like three or four years since COVID I do cook quite a lot and I watch a lot of YouTube videos on like self-help in in terms of aromatherapy, cooking and all that stuff. And I've been doing that for the past few years. So I've just kind of been building my skills, experimenting and doing what I can, building things and creating things and just, I don't know, I'm pretty much an introvert. I rarely hang out with friends and I don't date. So yeah, I, I pretty much keep to myself. I spend a lot of time with my plants and I really love it. Which plant at your house is breaking your heart or on the struggle bus? 
that would be the Hoya Linearis. Oh, I've given up on that Hoya. It's still there. It's still like hanging in there. It's got one foot in the coffin already. I've been struggling with it for a long time. I keep propagating it, trying to save it. It does require cooler climate. It does require consistent watering, which I cannot provide. And it's very, very pest prone in terms of mealybugs. So it's, it's something that I'm really willing to let go at any time now and not gonna get again. And a lot of you guys do well with Hoya Linearis, especially in cooler climates in Europe and the United States, but unfortunately they don't do well here in Indonesia or in higher humidity or hotter climates. Construction noise going on and some rain pitter-pattering. I hope that this is not gonna bother anybody. But yeah, the Hoya Linearis is one that doesn't do well in my climate. Do let me know if you have the same problems or if, you, if they do well in your climate because I know that they come from mountainous region, if I'm not wrong, in Yunnan, China. So they do like it higher elevation, they like it cooler, they like it lower humidity. What first got you into plants? I answered this two years ago, but really quickly, I had a photo studio before, so I have a fashion photography background and I just wanted to get a Monstera for a prop. Just to photo with the model. And then that plant survived in the studio. It did really well under almost neglect. And one day I Googled up how to propagate it. And I just cut the patio off and put it in water and nothing happened, of course. So then I got frustrated and I looked at it again. I researched some more and realized you need the note and started getting more into the geeky side of things. And I tried it again and from then on, it's just been a downward slippery slope and I just started propagating a lot of plants, collecting plants and finding them beautiful in our space. So it's given a lot of meaning to my life and it's brought a lot of beauty to my living space and I hope that it does the same to you. This is why I set out to do this channel, to share my journey and also to share how to achieve better growth, how to propagate, how to style. Do you feel bad about plants dying or giving up on dying plants or plant burnout? Not at all. Uh, if you've seen my video where I purged a lot of the plants and a lot of my plants actually died in the move. I I'm a little bit frustrated about that, but I'm the kind of person that really, this rain is getting really hard, but I'm the kind of person that really lets go of things that are not meant to be. All right, so as you can see, we had a change in environment because it was raining at the time. And just so you know, that setup took me like an hour to do. So I'm a little bit disappointed that I couldn't finish, but a lot of things happened in between. I was actually filming a lot for the past two weeks. So we needed that table to work on plants, to rescue for plants. And now we've got a new setup and we're gonna continue on with the Q&A. So do you feel bad about plants dying or giving up on dying plants or plant burnout? I don't really feel bad at all, to be honest. Like I'm the kind of guy that if I get something, I'm willing to let it go. So here's the thing. Like I actually had an example, like a friend of mine, we went on a roller coaster back in Six Flags in New Jersey and he had a sunglasses with him, like a really branded pair of glasses. And he put it next to the roller coaster when we were boarding. But then as the train moved along, I believe there were other passengers, there were other trains along the track. By the time we got there, that glasses were gone. So somebody basically took the glasses. He was really mad and angry and it really ruined his day for him. And there I was thinking, uh, I didn't say it out loud to him, but I was thinking, if you can't afford to lose it, then don't buy it. So that is the same principle that I have with me throughout my life. And that includes plants as well. So if I'm willing to get it, then I'm also ready to lose it at any time. And I can also draw lessons from them. They are all lessons that we needed. So I'm willing to let a lot of them go when it's time to go out. Yeah, I just accept the fate. So I will learn to cherish the plants that I have as well. And I know that I have a lifetime ahead of me to collect more plants and to study them. So I'm not that bummed out about losing some of them. What is something you wish to tell or advise your younger self when starting out the plant journey? Ooh, okay, this question. Uh, I, again, this is episode is becoming a lot about money and I wanna apologize about that one more time. But basically, I think one of the things that I really regret was that when I got some plants and some of them were rare at some point during COVID, I did not sell them fast enough. So the trick is if you bought a rare plant, you're supposed to like wait a few leaves, propagate it, and then sell it um, at either the same price or at a lower price because plant prices actually do go up and they peak and then they always come down invariably at different rates per plant. So I did not do that. I was like hanging on to the, a lot of my plants, like my variegated monsteras. I was like waiting for like getting like 20, 30 of them. And they, would, they actually got a bit overwhelming because I don't have the 
space for all these plants. And uh, by the time I let them go, like two, three years later, they really has lost a lot of their value. So that is my advice is that if you are a plant collector, the one way to sustainably grow your collection is to buy a plant sensibly, of course, buy a plant, maybe it's a bit expensive or rare. And then as soon as you can propagate it in a safe manner, uh, that takes experience and a lot of intuition. It's a good idea to trade it for something else that's rare at the time or sell it. And then this is how we can keep growing our collection. So that is the one thing that I really regret not doing. So yeah, now I have all these past rare plants that are no longer rare. And uh, I, sadly, they're not really worth anything. I mean, obviously I bought them and I got them because I like the way they look and I still love them the way they are. But it's always a part of me that thinks, what happened if I traded some of these cuttings earlier on? I would have gotten even more plants. I might have even had more joy. But you know what? I'm happy the way things are now, so I'm not going to dwell in the past. But that is also maybe an advice for some of you new collectors moving forward is to try to propagate and try to trade up your collection, try to get more species along the way. And that's how you grow your collection without spending too much money. Was there a specific turning point when you really started to appreciate the more rare or unusual plants? Uh, actually, I started with common plants. So whoever asked that question did a good job. But I know that a lot of you did start out with the rare plants right on right away. Uh, I don't really recommend that actually. I recommend for you to start with some of the cheaper plants, some of the easier plants uh, to learn how to care for and propagate them. That is how I started. So I killed a lot of plants in the beginning. I don't know when was when did I buy the first I think my first rare plant was like the variegated monstera. Ha. I know it's very basic but yeah, that's what that's what I got. I remember driving over to Bogor. It's like an hour and a half away and then being very excited to pick it up in person. And back then it was still very, very expensive. After that moment, I maybe spent a year, a year and a half to collect some of these um, rare plants. And uh, yeah, but these days I'm a lot more sensible. I've kind of backed off away from the rare plants because one, I cannot afford them. But two, I'm really waiting for a lot of the uh, prices to come down a bit more to stabilize. Some of the rare plants these days, some of the new mutations, variegations, are still ex incredibly expensive. They're way more expensive than rare plants were before COVID. Are you ever planning to visit the UK for any plant tours? Uh, okay, first of all, I want to visit the whole world. I have the plans to visit the US, uh, Europe, UK, Philippines, my gosh. But basically, I'm going to Japan and Taiwan this coming month and also Singapore next week. So I'm going to be bringing a lot of plant contents there. But I'm going with my family. This That's my family trip. So it's the only way that I can afford a trip like that overseas. So if you are in a country or a city that has any plant events and somebody wants to sponsor me to come over, I'll be more than happy to. But, but other than that, traveling to another country that's super far away, it's beyond my budget. So yeah, I would love to someday. Let's hope things turn around for me and I can start traveling more and see the world. Or I can just wait for my family to plan a trip somewhere. Maybe we've never been to the UK. So maybe that's something that could happen in the foreseeable future. Best plants for areas with low light. Oh, okay. That caught me off guard. First of all, I did not look at the questions before I read them. So low light plants, I mean, it's the ZZ plants, Sansevierias. I also find that Scandapsis, they can take low light. Uh, they can do relatively well. Mm, what else can do low light? Some Marantas can do low light. I mean, a lot of plants actually can withstand low light conditions. You just need to water them a lot less and try to supplement light where possible. That's my advice for you. There's actually a lot of hacks you can use, like regular LED lights actually do work wonders for all plants so i instead of figuring out which plants can do well in low light i would figure out a system of rotation perhaps like to move it to a brighter spot with better airflow during watering days and then leave it there for like three or four days and then moving it back to the spot where you want it to be in the lower light situation what's your take on biophilic architecture hmm uh it actually blows my mind and it makes me smile every time i see it i'm gonna insert some Instagram accounts on the screen. And those are, I think, architectural accounts that kind of deal with like the fantasy of having plants live around us. Of course, some of them are a little bit exaggerated, but I think it's a wonderful idea and we definitely should 
incorporate more of that in our personal and also public spaces. When we learn how to care for plants correctly and with the right placement, the, these plants are actually a very good investment. They can keep growing, they can keep multiplying, and we just need to figure out a, a system to care for them and again to style them correctly. Were you able to downsize at all? Yes and no. I did downsize, but then I actually bought a few plants this month uh, for as part of my content. I was given some plants when I was filming as well. So I did increase my collection a little bit, but sustainably because I've been buying only cheap plants. So I'm doing a lot of my front yard plants as well, where it's like full sun plants and those plants tend to be a lot cheaper. So I have been getting more different types of plants, but not in a way that is like rare or in a way that's very overwhelming. And I'm also not propagating as much for my store or for sale. So any propagation that I have now is basically for this channel because I'm doing more care and propagation videos on this channel. So be on the lookout for that. What was your job before? That's a complicated question. I cannot answer this within 30 minutes, but very quickly I had a menswear clothing brand and then I came back to help my parents' business. We do window blinds and insect screens and curtains. And then I worked at Zalora, which is a fashion e-commerce. And then I had my fashion photo studio where we provide fashion photography services to fashion brands. And then I have this channel, of course. Also, I have a natural soul brand that is still ongoing. There's a lot in between and let's not go there in this episode. What do you do with your plants when you're going on vacation or a long trip? Who takes care of all those plants? So I actually have two ladies who worked for me for almost two years now. Uh, they helped me with my other businesses and they also helped me uh, clean the house sometimes. Like when we were shooting like this, I actually leave it uh, because it's like, it's 11 p.m. at night now. So in the morning they would come in and they would kind of put things away and they would help me water the plant, manage the plants. So when I'm not here, when I'm away, these are the two girls who are helping me take care of everything. The front yard, the backyard, the propagations, and also like just daily uh, cleaning of the, of the house. And uh, also my businesses, they're helping me pack, they're helping me uh, do a lot of administrative work as well. So they're quite important in my life. And if you're watching this, which I don't know if you are, I bet you're not. Uh, I want to thank you guys. Will mildew build up behind the cocoa fiber wall? Good question. A lot of people have that concern as well, and as well as I do. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this system. Again, it's a closed system back there in my backyard, and it's like, it can be about 97, 99% humidity if I close all the doors. But actually during the daytime, we leave the doors open and then there's actually really, really good airflow and the humidity dips to around 60 to 70%. So there's actually time for the green wall and the cocoa fiber to completely dry out. So one of these days, I'm actually going to pry open the cocoa fiber just a little bit in some areas to see if there's any kind of weird mold or mildew or fungus growing back there. I don't think there will be. Again, one more thing, these walls outside, they are painted with waterproof exterior paint. So they're meant to repel rain and I guess mold, fungus and all that stuff. What's your favorite plant? Oh gosh. Um, I'm really crazy about this Diffenbachia that I got a few, was it a week? It's over a week ago. It was a steel, so that's number one. I got it very, very inexpensive and um, a very beautiful marking. I've always wanted it. I've seen it around, so it's not rare or expensive, but it is hard to find. So I'm glad I found it. And every time I see it, it's just so stunning, but it's huge. So it's one of my larger plants and I struggle with it. I don't really have a lot of space here for larger plants. So let me see, I might actually propagate it and try to get like smaller plants out of it and maybe like get a bushy pot of like this different bakia. But let's see, but that is my favorite plant currently. I'm curious about the lighting you have here. It is beautiful. Also interested in pest control for this area. Uh, I think you meant the area where I did my last q and I can show you what it looks like in daytime. Uh, it basically gets a lot of natural light from the window. There's also LED lights that come in on the living room and they're on, I think about 16 hours a day. They're on timer, so they come on and off. So this natural and also this artificial light really, really helps the plant thrive in that area. And with pest control, I actually do take them outside, like in a group and just holds them down with like fungicide and pesticide as neem oil pretty much and uh, leave it there for like overnight and then I bring them back to their spots. It is a bit of a tedious work, but again, I have those two girls to help me out. So it's actually quite manageable and we do it every 
six to eight weeks. So it's not very often that we do it. And we actually have not, knock on wood, we've not had any pest infestation in this house. Um, we've been treating pests just throughout the collection. Again, every, I mean, in rotation, every month, every, I don't know, we don't have a schedule. But yeah, things are doing well. Like I had some pest issues in my previous rented home, but here we are very on top. I have not seen a mealybug ever. I haven't seen spider mites and all that. So there's something about this house that maybe works uh, for pest control as well. Maybe the pest didn't like it here, uh, or maybe just like a lot of the environment is more controlled here. So when we do the pest control, it really, really works on the plants. We're just curious. Why do you always propagate your plants like they did something wrong to you? What I mean is that you always cut your plants like close to the growth point or cut them even when they have super small internode huh uh yeah i'm a very violent propagator because i'm coming at it from an angle of one being adventurous i'm also very impatient i have a lot of plants and I have nothing to lose uh, so a lot of them will also for the sake of the content i realized that there are some plants that i really wanted to kind of master, kind of get more of. Sometimes they're also for the store, which I don't have anymore. I don't have the plant store anymore. So we're gonna see less of that. Um, like this Scandapsis in front of me, I actually chopped it up in many ways. Like it's already gr growing a single vine up and I basically just left the roots in there, but I just chopped up every single node, but it's actually growth growing back in vigor. There's actually many growth point here. So I am, um, not a conservative propagator, you could say that. And uh, it's not like I disrespect the plant or anything. I have also too much confidence, I have to admit. So maybe overconfidence is one factor here, but also my, it might be entertaining as well to see how some of these plants fare in like a more kind of not hostile. Like I, I try to push the limits, let's just say that. Uh, I like to see what works and what don't work. So for me, killing plants or I don't want to say harming plants, but to know what causes them to suffer, what's wrong, that's as important as doing things right. Have you encountered a spent note to your propagations? This is from the same person. I can't remember that. I've always made sure there's a growing eye. Even though I may cut very, very dangerously, I may cut really close to the node, or I may only do single node propagations, but I always make sure that it's a growing eye. Those that, without, those that don't have a growing eye are usually just thrown away, so yeah. An odd one, but would you say it's safe to trim off anthurium roots to avoid having to upsize pot as often? Hmm. First of all, if you have to cut roots of any plants because they got unruly, because they are overtaking a space, make sure you do sterilize the cut wound. That's number one, but you can do that. The plant can still live a decent life, I would say. But the thing with plants that you have to know is that plants are continuously growing. They're continuously maturing. So a plant that has stunted or a plant that has stopped growing or you're limiting the space will cause the plant to decline at some point. I mean, it may last months or years even, but I would say if you want to keep the plant a manageable size, you should propagate it. So take cuttings and start over and then you'll have a more manageable baby plant. And maybe you can take the mother plant and give it to someone or use the mother plant to produce tons of little babies that you can keep or give to your friends or trade for other plants. So that's one way that I would approach it rather than keeping it constricted in like a super tight pot that you are struggling with and those roots are just going to keep growing. So no matter how much you cut in the next few months, it's just going to keep coming. It's better to propagate it. That's my advice. I'm not sure it's the, it's the right answer that you needed. How much did the house cost? Why did you move there? I cannot answer the number exactly, but it's in the range of like a middle class here. So it's not cheap, but it's also not expensive. A lot of you guys living abroad, like in Singapore, Hong Kong, US, Europe would think that this house is dirt cheap because it came with, you know, I bought the land. So the land is under my name and then there's all these floors and, and it's considered inexpensive. That's what, how I would say it. But also I live in Indonesia, a country where there's a lot of extreme poverty and there are a lot of people who are suffering. Um, like uh, I would say that I live comfortably well, but I'm also conscious that it's a weird area. You know, it's, it's very expensive for some people, for a lot of people, but it's also very cheap for others. So it's pretty much like right down the middle, I would say. That's the valuation of the house. Um, in terms of why I moved here is because 
I was living with at my dad's home before and it didn't work out with him we had arguments because I had all these plants around and I was propagating and I was vlogging and I have my other uh, business my soap business as well so we were constantly packing stuff around the house especially during lockdown so I, I'm someone who really works from home I work all the time I wake up in the morning I work and now it's 11 p.m. and I'm still working editing so I needed my own space and this house was the perfect layout. Like I'm gonna link a video up above where I show you the tour of the house and I explain the layout a little bit. I think from that video, you'll see why I actually selected this home because it's perfect for my vlogging, for my lifestyle and for the plans. I noticed a sewing machine on a shelf in one of your rooms. Do you still work in the fashion field at times? No, I don't, but I really love to have the machine around as like, like a like a backup or it brings me comfort because I know that sometimes I do take in some of my clothes if it's like too big. I can take in my like pillowcases, I can sew basic things and I can also help maybe my parents alter some things once in a while. It hasn't happened in a while, but I, I just have that machine around and it really is, brings me a lot of comfort knowing that I can jump in and fix things anytime now. I wish I have the time in the world to start making clothes again, clothes and bags and things like that. I. I'm a very good pattern maker. When I'm looking at fashion items, I'm always thinking, how is that created? In my mind, I'm like constructing it. So it's something that I did in the past before and it was very intense. I don't wanna visit that again in that sense. I don't wanna go back to the fashion business or I work in fashion, but I it brings me comfort again to have the option of being able to make little things. All right, so we've made it all the way to the very end. I guess there are some repetitive questions that I'm not going to answer here, but thank you so much for submitting the questions. I hope you've enjoyed this session. Again, this is probably my last session for the foreseeable future. I don't see myself doing these types of Q&A because I tend to overshare and I'm not sure if that's a good thing. And also again, the performance didn't do so well with my first Q&A, so not many people actually watched it. So I'm gonna go back to my planty type contents. Yeah, and I'm really looking forward to a lot of really interesting plant care propagations, a lot of tours, a lot of uh, master breeders, genus specific specialists who are gonna give us advice. Again, I'm going to be traveling overseas too. So I'm gonna see what the plant markets in Japan and Taiwan looks like, go to the, their local plant stores. And before I let you go, I know not many of you actually watch these videos all the way to the very end. And thank you if you do, but I'm actually releasing some exclusive videos for my YouTube premium members. This means that people would have to pay to access these videos. And um, then if you're a Patreon member already, I will also be uploading these videos on Patreon so you can actually view some bonus contents. And I don't wanna put some of you off by limiting some of your viewing options. Uh, but these videos are not educational. They're just supplementary uh, content because I believe education should be free. It should be available to everybody. So these videos are just like plant hauls, a bit of shopping and things like that. But it really helps when people subscribe and they donate financially to the channel because we're not really doing so hot these days. Uh, so for those of you who are considering subscribing as a premium member of YouTube or in my Patreon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. For those of you who don't, please, uh, just by you watching these videos alone, you're helping me out a ton. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.